continuation ng ano to, ng uh, final scene ng previous episode. Well, before, the, before we could get to that, pinakita ang, na, sa episode na to, kung medyo gano'n nakatagal na uh, na tinatrabaho nila Yuga at Luke yung kaso ni Swirly. They even uh, they even consulted Ushiro. And according to him, uh, merong urban legend na umuugong sa kanilang community uh, uh, called Duelists na merong forbidden card na once you use this, you get to manipulate people. Also, okay, naniwala naman agad sila si Yuga at si Luke. So, they were all the way uh, until they saw this, uh, yun nga, yung uh, insects, uh, sort of a dueling insects village. So, well, na, no, na-conclude nila agad na ito yata ang pugad ng ng Duel Insects Club. Sila, Nanaho. I got that name clear. So, nandito na sila. Ang sumulubang sa kanila nito, si Tiger. Eh, syempre, nagtataka si Luke kung bakit. So, wow, nakasubo na si Yuga. Mm. He engages Tiger in a duel. It, um, wow, I couldn't say it was a back and forth affair kasi simula pa lang ng duel, Dominado na ni Tiger. Then, uh, Yugo made a little bit of a comeback by using his new fusion monster, si uh, Seven's Paladin. Pero, um, just when he was about to win the duel, biglang nag-activate ng trap si Tiger wherein naging zero ang attack ni Seven's Paladin. Yup, folks! Talo na naman si Yuga. Uh, after the duel, eh, siyempre, eh, naglakas na si Luke na natanungin ng ate niya kung bakit niya ginagawa ito. And, well, I couldn't say she gave, a, uh, she gave a clear answer on it. Pero, na-deduce kagad ni Yuga na uh, na-manipulate na ito ng duel in sex club. And, uh, In all likelihood, the Dual Insects Club has this card. So, umuwi muna sila sa talagang bahay ni Yuga. And of course, uh, if you've seen the episode, we now know who Yuga's mother is. Ay, oh, maayos ang bahay. Akala nga ni Luke na, ano eh, na uuwi sila sa mansion eh, kasi goha. Eh, nag- nagtaka yung mag-ina. So, in-explain lahat ni, ni Luke. Medyo natawa rin si Yuga eh. Ha? Ako nawawala din ang kapatid. Parang imposible yun. So, well, uh, Yuga's mother can vouch for that kasi alam naman niya kung sino anak niya. Ngayon, uh, phone call came in. Eh, maraming, tawag dito, maraming, kumbaga, maraming provision si Yuga nilagay sa phone nila. Para in case na mayroong prank call. <laughs> he, well, uh, he, his mom calls it uh, his anti-prank call roads. <laughs> so may pumasok na lihiti mong tawag. Si Yuwo ang tumatawag. Ayun, naalala lahat ni Yuga na mayroon palang emergency meeting. Sila nila, nila Yuwo. So takbo sila. With swirly in tow. So siyempre, eh, alam mo na ano namang iwan. <laughs> Iwan nila si Swirly doon sa bahay ni Yuga. Baka doon, baka doon magkalat yun. Nasa lubong nila dito sila Romin at si Gaoto. And of course, uh, Gaoto, Gaoto apologize for uh, what what they did in the previous episode. Eh, sabi ni, sabi ni Yuga, don't, don't mind it, I don't care. <laughs> Flat out, he said, I don't care. So, nandun sila. Uh, final scene. Hindi lang pala uh, tawag dito. It is no ordinary emergency meeting that you will uh, called for. It is it should be only between him and Yuga. It's just between you and me this emergency meeting. Let's break this down ARD style. 
face. Ito na papansin ko ngayon sa sa Yu-Gi-Oh series na to ha guys. Uh, mga ka lifestyle and uh, Patreon. For for a good three episodes now, ang bilis ng duelo. But for the past two episodes including this, maintindihan mo kung bakit. Kasi Yuga and Luke are in a race against time to save Swirlin. Later on in this episode, nakalata mo na deduce agad ni Yuga na ang Duel in Six Club ang may pakana nito, si Nana Ho. So, uh, he, knows, he knows who to look for na. Although, uh, the pacing, the fast pace of this episode was in the Duel scene, pero what's in it? Yeah, it was a quick Duel scene. Talagang, umpisa pa lang kasi, Dominado na ni, ni Tiger. Okay? But, if there's anything that the pacing will tell you, it's this. Tiger has sided with Nana Ho. Well, it's obvious. She's not being manipulated. Uh, she probably took Nana Ho's side of her own free will. Well, of course, much to the disappointment of both Luke and Yuga. If... The pacing were uh, were slower. Hindi natin uh, what you call this? Hindi natin mararamdaman yung uh, itong plot twist na to. That well, obviously Nana Ho isn't. Uh, then Tiger is not being manipulated by Nana Ho through this forbidden card, through this uh, forbidden forbidden spell or whatever or whatever made swirly this. Uh, what he is right now. Hindi eh. Talagang uh, nagkusa siyang kampihan ang Duel, in, ang Duel Insects Club. We don't know the reason yet but it is now obvious. Sana tinagalan pa nila yung Duel Sin. <laughs> ano eh? Fast pace na pero ang bilis lang ng laban. It just goes to show you how uh, how dominant Tiger can be in a duel. And yan nga, biktima, nabiktima si Yuga. But they should have they should have prolonged the duel scene a bit para medyo uh, para medyo exciting pa yung pacing. Yan lang. Yan lang ang complaint ko. But um, it's an acceptable pacing. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when... Yeah. When Tiger challenged for a duel. At si Yuga pa sumagot. What, the, what does this gear shift tell you? Simple lang. You are now, you are now doubting... Uh, you, you get to doubt... Tiger's, uh, Tiger's motives kung bakit niya ginagawa ito. And yun nga, after the duel, we have concluded that she has now sided with the enemy, the dueling, the Duel Insects Club. Uh, this this gear ship is currently racking my brain right now. Final gear ship. Dalawa lang yan. Nung nagulat si Luke na ganito lang pala ang, ganito lang pala kasimple ang talagang bahay ni Yuga. Why did I call it the gear ship? Oh! Simple lang. Luke has finally been exposed to the truth. Kasi I think for the first time, we we see uh, Yuga's parents, uh, particularly her, his mother, at saka yung talagang bahay niya. Hindi pa na yung, hindi pa na yung, uh, yung junk shop na yun ang talagang bahay niya, kumbaga talagang tambayan lang. Well, you can also speculate through this gear ship that 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 uh, that vacant lot, that junk shop, is owned by his family. Where did it end? We're now back to square one as to um, where this missing president sibling is. In all likelihood, it's not Yuga, and this gear ship proves that. Kaya ako din na gear ship. So these two gear ships that I saw, both of them will play a role down the line in this Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Okay? Mabigat na kalaban si Tiger. And now that she sided with the enemy for 
for reasons still unclear. Team well, sevens will have their hands full. So, plot wise, um, malinis. Bakit? Well, believe it or not, because of the dual scene. Kasi may ikli lang eh. Um, on the flip side, if you, kung hinabahan pa nila ang duelong ito, hindi natin ma-appreciate yung ano, yung, yung kaso ngayon ni Swirly. Because, well, they're in a race against time to, to save him. Kaya, kung hinabahan nila ang dual scene, baka hindi na maging malinis ang plot na to. The dual scene had a, um, had a, had a bad and a good effect to this episode. Kasi, naapektuhan yung pacing at yung plot. The pacing in a, um, uh, in a somewhat bad way, and, pero the plot in a positive way. So, pace, flow, and plot, because of the dual scene, the pacing and the plot were, um, were hard to judge. Although I am critiquing this right now in front of you, Patreon, mga ka lifestyle. The dual scene acted like a um, acted like a one peso coin here. It has two faces. Kumbaga, naapektuhan niya yung pacing in an adverse way. Naapektuhan naman niya ang overall plot ng episode in a positive way. So, you can say you can pick your poison when it comes to the dual scene. Talagang, um, we can now say that the dual scene made its mark in this episode. Although, hindi ganun kahaba ito. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 76. Two thumbs up. Bakit? Excuse me. Kasi, it's probably the first, well, ever since I've, Ever since rating uh, this, ever since uh, I decided to critique Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, ngayon ako nakakita ng dual scene nila na nagkaroon ng positive at negative impact sa iisang episode. Bihira mangyari eh. Although, yung... Hmm, ba yun? Although the dual scene in the previous episode can be judged that way, iba eh. Iba yung naging impact ng dual scene dito. Because, well, we now know that Tiger has just sided with the dual insects club for still unknown reasons. Ayan naman yung sabihin sa harapan nila Yuga at Luke. Talaga kakaiba yun eh. Kakaiba yung impact ng dual scene na to in this episode. That's why I gave it the two thumbs up. So, will we expect more of these kinds of duels in season two? Definitely. Dalawang sunod ne. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode seventy-six. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great Yu-Gi-Oh! series, mga lifestyle. Ano ka ba, Tiger? Why? Why? So what do we do now? Of course, the thrill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Mm, can't wait to... Uh... Basta masasabi ko lang. We may find out what this forbidden card is. To those of you who haven't seen the teaser for the next episode yet. I, I ain't gonna say anything. <laughs> so, Patreon, wait for my next upload. For... Uh, for fans of the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. First and foremost, the road to the finale has just started for this anime. 
they got a call from uh, from, uh, from headquarters saying na uh, well another shard has been activated number eight it's over the uh, it's over the mountains of Russia so pumunta sila agad doon and uh, nakipag-contact sa isang guide na well in the fight in the um, in the opening scene got involved with the, with, with the creature that actually absorbed the shard. Eventually, uh, the, the guide agreed and up they went. Ngayon, um, due to some uh, some nosy tourists, Bigfoot shows up. Eh, ang lakas ba naman ang sounds ng mga tourists na to eh? O, di na-attract siya. Mm. So, all hell breaks loose. Mickey uh, comes in to well to to compete with uh, with Japan City as usual. Then Elmo of Unakasita comes in to interfere. Mejo, mejo na wala sa subject ng mission niya. He went after Botan. Kasi of course he he's going to blame Botan for Pino's death. So, but the fight ensues. Oh, Botan subdues him. Eventually they had to. They had to retreat because talagang super lucky na itong Bigfoot na to. And uh, while they were while they while they were in the retreat phase, na figure out ni Ryunosuke kung anong kung ano talaga ang source of power ng Bigfoot na to. It's not just the shard, but its newfound ability to to absorb other animals, to fuse with other animals. Well, ang pulo dulo ng nabito, shard number eight. Pero may napansin si Kuruma about this about this creature na isinier na kiriyonoske. I think our Bigfoot hates liquor, hates alcohol. Kasi nung uh, kung mga yung isang tourist kasi nakakuha ng isang bote ng ala. I, ibinasag dun sa creature so nasabo, nasaboy ng alcohol so parang parang nanginig uh, nanginig ng nanginig ng gusto yung yung halimaw eventually uh, letting him go kasi muntik na siyang kainin ng, ng, ng creature na to itong tourist na to so yun ang napansin ni Kuruma and he has proof Nakuha pala niya yung ano eh, na-secure niya yung yung cellphone ng tourist na yon at ipinakita yung kay Ryunosuke. Because that tourist actually recorded the fight. Pinakita niya. Sabi ni Ryunosuke, O nga no? Ba? So, they now see an, they, they now saw an opportunity to trap the creature and um, extract the shard at the same time. So, they hatched a plan involving uh, a mountain tram. Eh, so to lure him out, ang ang ginamit nila yung dog whistle ng ng guide. Dumating yung creature, pero not from the ground. From up above, nakakalipad na. <laughs> it went the creature to this, uh, this yung trap car nila. Nung nakita ni, ni Kyohei, Pak! Sinarin, sinarin yung pinto and the car sprinkler system suddenly went on. Ayun, puro ano pala yun? Puro, puro alak pala ang lumabas. So, nagpukuwing glass na yung, ano, yung, yung creature. Uh, the creature manages to escape the trap pero uh, he's already doused in alcohol in too much alcohol. So talagang naglabasan na yung mga yung mga hayop na inabsorb nito. So, pak! Oh, labasan! Then, but he was still violent. So, ang ginawa ni Kuruma, kumuha ng, ng vodka sprayer. <clears throat> Sinaboy niya. May naglaba sa mga hayop. Ugh! It was, it, it was actually a gross sight to see. Of course, the usual characters came in to interfere. Mickey. Then, si Elmo, ng unang asita. Who, who is now hell-bent on killing Botan. So, Medyo na-distract ang, 
ang Japan safety kasi eh, tinarget ni Elmo si Botan. Eventually, they were able to subdue the creature at yung ulo ng aso ng guide ilumabas na. But as a final attempt to to uh, to protect its master, kinagat si Elmo rito. Hanggang sa lumabas siyang ganun. Talagang hindi na mai hindi na maitanggal ni ni Elmo ang ang ulo ng aso sa kanya kasi si Bernard eh, laki. So he had no choice but to shoot it. Pero um Bottom tried to help but it was too late. Na nabaril na ni Elmo yung aso. So sinabi na ng ng guide um rest in peace. So eventually the um the creature was the creature was neutralized. Nakuha ng Japan safety ang shard number 8. They were able to get the shard pero Elmo had almost had the last laugh here. Pinasabog niya yung yung tram control tower so triggering an avalanche. Who comes into the rescue? Si Oliver. Surprisingly, hmm, the guide buries his dog at the same time Mickey and Oliver reunited or their team up at nangako si Mickey na aasikasun yung suspension niya. Then, while this was happening, Elmo was of course um, uh, retreating in a helicopter. May hawak hawak some picture. This is the final scene, folks. Meron siyang hawak na picture that has um, young, the younger versions of him, Pino, and Oliver. Halata ng halata sa itsura at saka salamin. Puta. Let's break this down ARD style. Pace. From the first time they uh, they encountered the creature, um, our lead characters encountered the creature, the pacing picked up. Natural. They're after a um, they're after this monster that um, that was created by a shard. It was a tense situation all the way. From, from the moment Bodan and Gang um, first encountered the creature. Talaga the pacing picked up. But, I could not feel the pacing go down when they were, uh, what you call this? When they were brainstorming as to how, how to stop this creature. Hindi ko naramdaman na, na, pumik, na, bumaba ang pace dito. Talagang consistent. From that moment up to, um, up to the moment where Japan Safety actually secured the shard. Am I complaining about the pacing? Nope! Sakto lang. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was, um, was when the guide finally agreed to, um, to Botan's, finally submitted to Botan's plea to, to help them find the creature. Itong, itong Bigfoot na to. Why did I call this a gear shift? It's probably because of um, uh, Botan's, Botan's way of um, psychologizing people. Kasi, um, well, hunter guides are considered common folk. So, you have to show them the big picture they, before they could fully understand the situation. Ganito ang ginawa ni Botan dito. That's a gear shift. That's a gear shift to me. Then, final gear shift, dalawa lang yun, was, um, was, the, was the time they actually um, trapped the creature. Yung sa, yung sa, sa, sa tram car. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a really elaborate trap kasi ang laki. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, simple lang. Japan safety now understands how um how Botan does business. Okay? She is no uh no, she's not ruthless. And but may puso si Botan. May puso. So they are now taking her um views on the matter into consideration. Kasi, well, number one. 
She's the granddaughter of their of, of, of the chairman of Japan Safety. So, yep, you, you guys better listen to her. And number two, um, binigyan niya ng puso ang grupo. Kaya ako tinawag na gearship ito. Marami, dami maraming theories na pwedeng inyong i uh, formulate dito out of this out of this one gearship alone. So these two gearships that I saw, hmm, the final one will play a will play a role down the line in this road to the finale. Bakit? Kasi. Japan safety is now is now being creative in, on how to secure the shards. They're not um, they are not competing anymore with the CIA, and of course they're they they need to get those shards out of the hands of Una Asita. And what well, Mickey is slowly appreciating their teamwork, and um, uh, he probably thinks they deserve this shard because. Wala eh. Wala yung partner niya, si Oliver eh. He's, also, he's in suspension. But all of a sudden, Oliver appears to save them from that avalanche. How convenient. Plot-wise. Excuse me. Malinis. I guess Studio Gambit, um understands that it's now the road to the finale all side stories and backstories are somewhat irrelevant so there's no um there's no need to cinch in one anytime during this uh during this uh final five episodes uh, yeah uh, you need clean plots because you are as early as this episode, you are now building up to the finale. Yeah. It's not gonna make any sense kung maglalagay pa sila ng ano yun. <laughs> ng backstory or side story right now. Anytime uh, from episodes 9 to 12, wala. Wag. Masisira ang momentum ng anime na to going into the finale. So... I guess yeah, Studio Gambit made a uh, made made the right call here by not putting in a backstory or side story sequence. Yeah, malinis ang plot. I'm uh, unsatisfied well, with the plot of this episode. So base flow and plot, they all came together for this episode. Elmo has the proof that Oliver is una asita. So, Tesla Note, Episode 9. Two thumbs up. Bakit? For the very first time, Japan Safety has secured a shard. And... Um, and it had to take, uh, and all it took was a dog to to accomplish their mission. Kasi kung um, if uh, well, the dog's name is Igor. If Igor did not bite Elmo in the neck right here, hindi madi disable ang 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 creature na to. Well, you can see that Igor was the biggest piece of this creature's puzzle. The moment na naihiwalay niya sarili niya dun sa creature, humina na eh. Bumags Halos bumagsak na ang creature. And, but, but unfortunately, um, he paid the ultimate, Igor paid the ultimate price. He, he, he got shot by Elmo. So, um, you can see it was his final act on uh, on this plane of existence dahil sa huling sandali ng kanyang buhay he protected his master kahit um uh in Ryunosuke's theory 
wala nang uh, ano eh halos wala halos wala nang buhay yung mga ano yung mga lumabas na hayop sa kanya doon sa sa creature na yun wala nang buhay talaga pero as if parang natutulog lang eh they, they didn't look decomposed so wow uh, all I can say for that dog is Rest in peace, Elm. Uh, rest in peace, Igor. Rest in peace. And uh, maybe see you on the Rainbow Bridge. So again, Tesla Note Episode 9. Thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow. Now they're animal oriented. And mm, they gotta know something about Oliver. Oliver needs to be exposed. So what are we gonna do now, Patreon, Maka Lifestyle? Simply la. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Tandaan nyo, the road to the finale of this anime started here in episode 9. Kaya, are you still gonna miss out? Huwag yung idayalan sa akin yung, yung animation nito. Okay? At the end of the day, it's the storyline that matters. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for everybody who's um, who's uh, solid ARD, okay lang kung di mo lang mag Patreon. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Patawad po mga ka-lifestyle and Patreon. Hindi ko masyadong i-expound ang rundown ngayon kasi um, these are three stories with absolutely weird antagonists. Okay. Basta first story, uh, it involves the um, uh, the vampire known as uh, Kakyuken Lover. The second story involved Etiquette Breacher. He's both a vampire and a necromancer in a way. Third story naman involves si Micro Bikini. Ang source of power niya, yung suod niyang Micro Bikini. Na oras na, oras na meron siyang kagatin na biktima, magiging, uh, magiging alipin niya ito at nakasuod din ng Micro. <laughs> All I can say about the, um, the three stories within this episode are this. You should watch the episode yourselves. Kasi kung ako magkikwento, it won't be, it won't be as funny. Guaranteed. Kaya, I'm leaving it all to you, mga ka-lifestyle, and um, my patrons to, um, to go to the net and go, go somewhere to go to uh, these anime streaming apps and just watch the episode and enjoy it. Kaya na tayo nandito, well, of course, to critique it. So let's run this down ARD style. Pace! Excuse me. When it uh, came to the pacing of this episode, ang sarap eh. Sa, sa ganda ng pacing ng episode na to, you won't, ano eh, you're not, you're, you'll always be looking forward to the next story. Kasi, yung pacing niya pang comedy talaga pang comedy it's not just for um it's not just for a multi-story episode it's for a comedy episode syempre kung babagalan mo ang pace ng ep ang pacing ng ganitong klaseng episode hindi ano eh ang hina ng dating ng ang mag magiging mahina ang dating ng comic element Alright? You get what I'm saying, mga ka-lifestyle, Patreon? Kaya, hindi ko na, ano eh, kaya hindi ko na masyadong uh, ni-rundown yung episode na to. Kasi because, if I tell you uh, the gist of the three, of this episode's three stories, mawawala yung comic element eh. That's why I would rather, um, I would rather have you watch the episode yourselves. Kasi talagang, and, well, to prove my point that the pacing was very sound in this episode. The pacing is that good. It's that freaking good. Flow naman. 
The biggest gear shift here that I saw was when uh, na, was when Satetsu um, absolutely lost it when Etiquette Breacher kicked John. Well, that was more than enough to piss this mad-mannered vampire hunter off. And sinong saksi? Si Draluk at yung isang reporter ng Vampire Weekly na hinatak ni Draluk para, ah, syempre, para mabigyan ng konting PR itong Vampire Hunter na to. If there's anything this gearship will tell you, it's this. Sa Tetsu, mild-mannered as he is, well, he too has his limit. For me, this is a gearship. Kasi, uh, character development gearship ito for Sa Tetsu. Being a close ally to the main protags, si Ronaldo at si Dralo. And well, um, Dralo has become so close to the vamp, to the to the to the hunter guild, to the entire hunter guild that they would even seek his, uh, they would even seek his help regarding these matters. Plot wise, <sighs> again, planchado. Especially um, the way they transitioned the, uh, between the second and the third stories. Kasi both second and third stories um, directly involved sa Tetsu. Of course, yung second story, it was all about him. Third story naman, um, hinatak sila ni Ronaldo for this particular vampire. If the plot were this well ironed out, we wouldn't appreciate the entire episode. Especially the second and third stories that directly involved sa Tetsu. Kaya, grabe. For, well, a multi-story episode should be, uh, should have a well-ironed-out plot. Kahit tatlong magkakaiwalay na story ito, kailangan meron, meron konting, um, may konting unity, so to speak. Dapat yung transition is smooth. Yan. Uh, as in the second and third stories. Medyo smooth ang transition dyan because of Satetsu. And because of Satetsu's involvement. Siya yung key character dito. No complaints about the plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Giving us another set of zany stories and with um with the equally zany uh antagonists for each excuse me so the vampire dies in no time episode 9 daw pa pa to big to big two thumbs up na i uh, i really got treated to um to three to three really crazy stories uh I had, I had a really good time watching this episode. To be honest with you, mga lifestyle Patreon. Talagang. Kaya, I um, took it upon myself to, um, again, to shorten my rundown as much as I can. Para, um, ma-judge nyo na maigi ang kritik ko sa episode na to. You will have to watch the episode yourselves. Ako na nagsasabi sa inyo. Baka masira ako lang eh. So, power tip ko sa inyo for this episode, mga ka-lifestyle, Patreon. Go out there and watch this episode. Talaga. Yun lang masasabi ko. Nakakatawa talaga. So again, The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 9. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this pretty funny anime, mga ka-lifestyle. <laughs> it's getting crazier by the episode. So what do we do now, mga ka-lifestyle? Well, of course we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Ano, excited na ba kayo? Kasi because of this episode, I'm all fired up for the next one. Kaya, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And to everybody um, who's a fan of the ERD, if you're still not on Patreon, well, I strongly encourage you to be on Patreon. But 
Nonetheless, enjoy the other reviews on this digest. Mm. So it's still the um, first half of the episode, puro ano eh, aftermath ng pagkamatay ni Leslie. And Siguro is starting to ponder on what uh, what Leslie gave him, yung note with parang 16 digits. Now, um, napansin niya that this is the serial number to a photo. So, um, the team was um, putting together all these photos by Leslie at uh, lalagay nila sa isang album. Dito niya nakita yung itong number na to na nakalagay sa note na yung binigay sa kanya ni Leslie bago siya namatay. It was a, yeah, it was actually a serial number to one photo that was taken six months ago. Nagtataka siya kung bakit bakit ito ang ibiniling sa kanya ni Leslie. Then, uh, a call came from Sumire. Ayun, may mission na naman daw sila according to according to Vera. So, balik na naman sila doon. In one scene, napansin ka agad ni Larry at ni Kobato yung, uh, yung backdrop ng photo na tinitignan ni Shigure uh, a few scenes ago. Parehong-pareho nito. So, um, Larry and Kobato could not ring any bells uh, if, there, if there's something special about this area. Now, Submission at hand naman. Of course, they're out to get uh, LC. Of course, who who interferes? Si Hayden na naman. Now, but this time, he's got an arm. <laughs> he's got an artificial arm. So, yun, nagkasagu pa sila ni Shigure. And, well, basically, Shigure is asking him why, why he wants to, uh, why he wants to kill LC. So, talagang, all hell broke loose. Uh, while all of this is going on, unti-unti nang napipiece together ni Shigure kung ano ang uh, ang gustong uh, ipagawa sa kanya ni, ni Leslie the moment he dies. So there was this necklace. Meron, siyang, meron pa ng table doon. Pinuksan niya yung drawer. Nandun yung sinasabing notebook ng bartender na nire-refer ng bartender na every time every time Leslie is in that bar he write, he's writing down on this notebook that was that notebook nakabalot sa isang necklace here are notes um, pertaining to um, pertaining to Vera herself identity niya at yung true intention niya on why she is so obsessed with killing LC Pero hindi nabasa lahat ni Shigure. Pero nandun eh. He was close to that already. When? Final scene. Nagkaharap si Vera at yung... Uh, let's just say na isa pang kaalyado nila, Hayden. Et, hawak na ngayon si LC. Then, all of a sudden, Nadia um, sets explosives for him. Yung building na nandun sila, Kobato at Larry, ayun, biglang... Uh, bumagsak. So, as a means of distraction, umalis na yung, dumu yung mismo dumukot kay LC kasama. So, another mission failure for uh, for the Vera Platoon. Hmm. Excuse me. So, let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. I wasn't totally satisfied with um with the uh, with the pacing of this episode. Lalo na yung second half because um I don't know. It was it was a tense pacing pero may kulang eh. I just couldn't um pinpoint kung ano yung ikinulang ng episode na to when it came to the pacing. Basta it's within the second half of the episode. Uh, I really uh, had that strong feeling that um, uh, the pacing went haywire uh, during the second half. So, yun. 
That's my complaint. Flow naman. First gear shift is when Shigure discovered that the number that Leslie gave him was actually a serial number to a photo. Nga, well, why did I call this a gear shift? For me, this gear shift triggered the episode. Kasi, um, sabi nga ni Shiguri rito, the EXO was always on top of things. So, eventually, uh, Shiguri pieced, uh, pieced together the, um, pieced together the puzzle. At nakalagay doon mismo sa notebook, yun ang pambungad ni Leslie. Uh, according to, yeah, on how the, the notes opened. If there's anyone else reading this uh, notebook, it's because I'm already dead. You will also learn this gear shift. How Leslie anticipated his death. Mukhang, there's something um, about Vera and Elsie that, um, that meets the eye. There's something more to these two than meets the eye. And through this gear ship, we, we can also say that it's all in Leslie's notebook. It's a very vital gear ship. Second gear ship was... Hmm. Was when um, Vera finally saw Elsie. So, uh, inutusan niya si Shigurin na sumama sa kanya. And well, she really made it clear that she's going to lead um, Elsie's entourage to a point where where Shiguri can make his kill. Bakit gear shift ito? What? Just goes to show you how, yeah, in the words of um, uh, the higher ups of um, of the Antarctica project na Vera is so obsessed with assassinating the child of God or or it's how they call Elsie it, this gear ship will really make you wonder bakit um bakit ganito kapursigido si Vera in as much as to sacrifice uh, her own men in doing so final gear ship was yun Pinakita na lang na someone else has LC at kilalang kilala niya si Vera. And he um, he absolutely knows kung bakit nandun si Vera. Why did I call us a gear ship? Well, simple lang. What does this guy, well, what's the deal with this guy? Gano ka ba niya kakilala si Vera? By the way, um, that building fell na yung pinabagsak ni Nadia, mukhang kasama nila Hayden ito. But, uh, we truly don't know uh, the identity yet of this, uh, this kidnapper. Pero, kilala siya ni Vera. Hanata sa mukha ni Vera. That's why I call it the gear ship. Because, yeah, it really makes you think. Aba, alam mo meron si LC. Bakit yung gusto pa... Bak? Why is it? Why is she on everybody's hit list? No? Why is she on everybody's hit list? Ano ba ang uh, mangyayari pag namatay siya? Ano ba ang gusto nila mangyayari? So these three gear shifts that I saw, well, we are on the road to the finale. Deep inside, this is just a 12 episode run. And it, it has started with episode 8. So talagang, these gear shifts, I am very sure, will play a role in the final four episodes of this anime. So, should we, should we still watch it? Oh, hell yeah. Plot-wise, malinis. Because, ko ha, yun ko sa inyo, but for... For a sci-fi anime like Deep Insanity, hindi ka tapang maglagay ng lana sa Road to the Finale. 
As much as possible, hindi ka na dapat maglagay ng backstory or side story. Kundi, sira ang ang combined plot ng final five episodes. Take a look at the mistake King's Raid had. Okay? Nagkalo sila ng recap episode during the road to the finale. It's part of the official episode count. Right? So, I think it was episode tw- yeah, episode 24. It was episode 24 of King's Raid. Nagkaroon bigla sila ng week. It's a recap episode basically. Kaya, nasira eh. Nasira yung, yung overall plot ng final five episodes. Talagang, muntik na ako mawalang ng gana sa anime na yun because of that uh, because of that episode so they pro- well, Silver Link probably took uh, lessons from that and talagang dito malinis ang plot because it's well it's the mission all over again so Ver- the Vera Platoon gave it another go and in the end they failed again so We can now say that the Vera Platoon is on a losing streak because they could not kill Elsie. There is someone, there's always someone interfering. If the plot weren't this clean, we, well, I personally would not appreciate the, um, uh, the pace and, well, not, not exactly the pace, the, the flow of the episode, the gear shifts. I would not exactly appreciate all those three gear shifts. Talagang, well, you can say that the plot saved this episode because of the, uh, from, from uh, the, the pacing blunder. So, pace, flow, and plot, because of the plot, the, um, the episode turned out fine. Everything worked out fine. So, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 8. Hindi ako mapatupik-tupik pa. Matama. I guess, um, you're, uh, you're saying that, ay, siguro it's the pacing. Kung akala nyo, eh, it's because of the pacing, tama kayo. <laughs> because, um, They could have what you call this. They could have made um, the shooting scene of uh, the shooting between Shigure and Hayden more intense to make the pacing to, to pick up the pace a bit. Pwede yon. And sa final scene kasi pa sana na nakita na hawak na ni hawak na ng ng panibagong mokong na to si LC and Vera couldn't do anything kasi hostage niya si LC but how can how can Shigure fire his shot kung meron ganitong kung meron ganitong sagabal so um yun lang talaga ang complaint ko yung uh what you call this I could, I wouldn't want to call it mediocre. Um, yeah, the pacing is board is teetering between mediocre and decent. Decent because of the first half. Naging mediocre na no second half. So it's it's halfway there. Kaya pero pero one top up pa rin ang binigay ko because well, the plot of this episode saved saved it. Uh, kumbaga uh, had its back Yun. so again Deep Insanity The Lost Child Episode 8 Quantum Up lang talaga mga ka-lifestyle Patreon uh, although it was a tense uh, final moments of the episode talaga yung yun eh, yung pacing muntik na masira sa pacing So what do we do now? Of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Tandaan nyo, the road to the finale has just started. So, may pag-asa pa bumawi. 
as long as they don't cinch in uh, a very long backstory sequence or side story sequence the road to the finale of this anime will be will work out fine Kasi, well total one top up pa rin yung binigay ko rito sa episode to. so patreon wait for my next upload so everyone for everyone following the still following the ARD Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Finally, our um, Volume 6 roster is now complete. Dahil, well, rejoice JoJo fans, Stone Ocean is now here. <laughs> the name of the main protag here is Jolene Kujo, the daughter of Jotaro Kujo. Well, Bottom line of this uh, of this pilot is her own boyfriend framed her for um, for for what you call this for for the accident that killed a guy on her um, uh, what you call this on her trial. Umagrisha sa abogado niya na bigyan siya ng na magplay bargain na lang. She will only be looking at one to two years imprisonment, uh, and, and of course the possibility of parole. Pero hindi yon yung sinabmit na plea deal ng kanyang abogado. Right there and then, you can now conclude that Jolene has been set up by her own boyfriend. So eventually, nakulong si Jolene, but not without getting even with the lawyer that screwed her. Her father um, had uh, had the uh, had the lawyer give this to her. Yung parang parang scarab na ganon. Yun pala merong matala sa piraso. Tumusok sa kanya nun, Then all of a sudden, her stand activates. Mm. <laughs> so now we uh, we later on found out in this episode. In case you well. In case you, you guys have already seen the pilot, we later found out in this episode that the the shard that that caught her was actually a piece of the bow and arrow. So na kulung na siya. Fast forward na. Well, she eventually gets even with the lawyer. So, yung lumalabas na string sa kanyang katawan, she actually used that to strangle the lawyer and. Um, parang in a way parang ano eh parang for, way, for a way to manipulate the air conditioning imbis na magpasok ng presong hangin paglalabas ng hangin so a lot of things can happen when 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 air is being sucked out of a out of a closed space he crashes onto a, on a lamppost on a bridge he dies nakagan nakaganti na si Jolene that was the final scene. <laughs> and she just said, this is going to be fun. <laughs> like it or not, mga lifestyle Patreon, I am a JoJo fan. So let's break this down ARD style. <sighs> pace. Would you believe it was a slow but excruciating pace? <laughs> From start to finish, Yun lang masasabi ko. <laughs> this is the type of pacing that Jojo is known for. Pero if you would compare it to um the pilots of Golden Wind and Diamond is Unbreakable, yeah, the last two, the last two um Jojo series, medyo may kabilisan ang pacing nito. Because, well, probably David Production um, figured that we may want to, um, they want they wanted to um, speed things up a microscopic bit. Because the part where um, Jolene and Romeo were, were driving, yeah, that, that led to the accident, backstory sequence, eh. Pero, you can't discount that kasi yun ang pinagmula ng kaso niya. 
Kaya siya kinasuwa ng mass order dahil uh, pinalalabas ng pinalalabas ni Romeo na what hindi siya nagsasalita pero uh, he's implying that Julian was at the wheel sa nagda-drive. And wow, right? Again, compared to the pilots of Golden Wind and Diamond is Unbreakable, mas tense ito. Um, it's just as slow but more excruciating to watch. But the pacing will absolutely make you feel um, feel sorry for Julin. Talagang um, you're going to uh, you're going to you make you wish you're going to You you want to uh, you want to strangle the boyfriend um, for for being a dick for being uh, for pinning it all on Jolene for putting her yeah for putting her in prison bottom line and the lawyer um, that did this screw job on her eh bayaran pala ni Romeo ito yung yung boyfriend niya the pacing will really draw you into the storyline. That's what Jojo is known for. Kaya, talagang, I really had those Jojo feels when I saw the pilot. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when, um, when Jolene received that scarab, tapos bigla siyang natuso, at bigla, bigla na lang, Parang nilumabas sa kanya mga, mga lubid na ganon. Then, uh, well, if you're a JoJo fan, that means only one thing. That, um, that prick activated her stand. Whatever that one is. Pero later on, we saw that as a piece of the bow and arrow. Yung piraso ng arrowhead mismo. It's a very pivotal gear shift. Because, well, You can also call it a character development gearship because we saw here how Jolene's stand was activated. Kaya, um, it's a way of it's a way of her old man telling her na baka ka, you need this to survive. You can all yeah, you can say that it is the gearship that will trigger the anime. Pwede. Second gear shift was when Jolin met a girl named Hermes Costello. Yan. Why did they call this a gear shift? Kasi it's probably the first time Jolin ever made friends since she got into this kind of trouble. Okay. And well, uh, Hermes is a seasoned criminal. Second time na niya makulong sa, sa ganitong klaseng kulungan. So, for sure, sinasabi, sinabi nga niya kay Jolene, I'll be sentenced for sure because it, it's already my second time. Her ordeal, si Hermes, is connected to our third and final gear shift. Lately, Jolene has been, has been hearing voices na uh, kahit siya mismo hindi niya maintindihan eh. So, nung Nagsimula ng bugbugin si Hermes inside that bus kasi hiniwalay sila eh. Dito si... Dito ba, ibababa si Julin. Then, habang ini-escort si Julin, naririnig niya kung ano ang ginagawa ng mga guards kay... kay Hermes on that bus. And siguro, uh, she really wanted to help her new friend. The only way she did that is through her stand. Well, why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi, this is actually the first time Jolene went deliberate on uh, on using her stand. Because it it was for for her new friend. Kasi, narinig, narinig niya talaga eh. It's, teka, ba't yung binubugbog yan? These three gear shifts that I saw, the first um triggers the anime, And the last two, we now get to have an idea of how Jolene is going to use her stand. And 
Hindi pa dumarating si Jotaro para uh, ituro sa kanya ito. But she's already learning. Plotwise, it was an all-important backstory sequence yung kung paano na nag-end up si Julin sa kulungan in the first place. Kaya, malinis ang plot. Kasi, kung um, it, well, it's a slow and excruciating pace, kung datagtaga mo pa ng side story to, like yung, uh, for example, kung paano nagkaroon ng gap ang mag-ama, well, it's it's a little bit irrelevant for this kind of um, for this kind of a storyline. We, well, we, we can talk about that later on in the anime. Right now, talagang uh, the viewer needs to focus on Jolene's case. And we, we all we all know what happened to her here in the pilot. If the plot were um were not this clean, hindi natin na eh, hindi natin ma-appreciate yung yung pinagdadaanan ng main protag ng ganong uh, ng ganong katindi. We, we, we may have some degree of appreciation, pero kung hindi ganito kalinis sa plot, baka sabihin natin na, ah, okay na frame up, ah, okay. Hindi natin, uh, we wouldn't uh, react like this. Tang inang yan, oh. Binayaran pala ng boyfriend ito para para i-frame up talaga si Jolene. Tang inang yan. <laughs> ako, ako, nagmumura nga ako kanina when I was watching the pilot. Talagang nadala ako ng, ng, ng episode to because of a very clean plot. You can only do that with a clean plot. So, base flow in plot They all came together for the pilot of the Jojo Part 6 anime. Nagang, whoa! Rejoice, Jojo fans! Stone Ocean is now here! So, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 1! Yeah! <laughs> Two thumbs up! Pangilang. Pang ilang season na ba to ng, ng Jojo anime? One. Mas. Pang lima. Pang lima. But in the manga, it's already part six. So, well, if you're a Jojo fan, you would, um, you would, uh, skip through the timelines based on the manga. Kasi, mas clear cut yung yung timeline sa manga para hindi ka rin mawala sa anime so this is part 6 of the manga kaya uh, tinatawag namin na Jojo part 6 ito because it is part 6 of the manga ako uh, I'm an anime only guy so yun na rin yung sinusunod ko para mas ano like I said a while ago mas clear cut kasi ang timeline ang pag uh, pag discern ng timeline ng ng overall storyline ng Jojo. If you do it this way, yan, parts, kasi parts 1 and 2, that's season 1 already of the anime. Pinag, pinagsama na kasi sila eh. Then of course, um, season 2 is part 3, Stardust Crusaders. Then, Diamond is Unbreakable, part 4. But season 3 of the, of the anime. And of course, uh, Golden Wind, Part 5 sa manga, pero season 4 sa anime. Kaya, um, I strongly suggest, if you're, if you're new to Jojo, follow the, uh, the timeline of the manga. Para hindi ka, para hindi ka mas shock. If you're going to, if you already decided to, um, to keep tabs on, on Stone Ocean. Lahat ng uh, connections regarding the Joe Star family tumigil lang sa part uh, tumigil lang sa Golden Wind kasi nag-focus yun sa anak ni Dio si Jorno. Sa talaga pinakabida doon eh. Kumbaga, so my track pina-sidetrack muna ni Hirohiko Araki ang storyline. 
and um, informing all um, all all followers of of this um, this anime franchise that Dio had a son who was a good guy. So, yun nga. Like deviate, pero it's one of uh, I think it's one of the best parts of the JoJo manga, on part five, uh, Golden Wind, in the anime. So, wow. Welcome back, Jojo! <laughs> so again, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 1! Two thumbs up! And that, well, first two thumbs up for this great anime franchise, Mahalo Lifestyle. Welcome back, Jojo! Ooh. So what do we do now? Hindi porkit Jojo fan, hindi ko nagagawin yung drill. Hey, ah! We'll wait for next week! No, because um, unfortunately, Netflix already released Stone Ocean's first 12 episodes. Kaya, for our sake, the ARD, uh, we're going to review it two episodes per week. Kaya, lahat ng odd numbered episodes nandito sa ARD mapapanood nyo. Pero, all the even numbered episodes will be exclusive to Patreon. So, maliwanag ba, mga kalaystal, Patreon. So, for my review of uh, episode 2, head on over to Patreon right now. But if you still want to, uh, you still want to do your own due diligence on episode 2, that's fine with me. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Well, he accepts the um, the assassination job. So, uh, but, but there's a there's a little thing he has to do first. Uh, he sent a message to Maha, uh, informing her that well, there's a, they got a job, of course, and he's now um, counting on her communication abilities and of course, Orna's vast information network, para talaga. Ma mabigyan siya ng tamang desisyon kung talagang kailangan itumba ang drug lord na to. This drug lord's name is Count um, Asba Venkar. So they've already discerned that yup, Count Venkar needs to die. So, no. He's found a way to um, to to properly infiltrate the, um, the Count's mansion. By way of what? Uh, by way of his wife. Kasi, um, well, masyado rin beauty conscious ang asawa nito. They were able to secure, um, yeah, orders from the Count's wife for Orna's products. Moisturizer and of course the chocolates. They personally delivered the products to the Count's wife. So, ayun, dinemon. Uh, dinemo ni Lou or in this case, Ilig kung paano gamitin yung moisturizer Ayan. at wow she's totally satisfied with the product she will keep the order then tumating bigla si uh, si Count Vencor yung asawa, ayun nakilala nila, namukha na nila na maigi at target nila then, that same night Nagkaroon ng party. Uh, Nag-usap naman sila, ano, nag-usap naman sila, Lou, na, oh, Ilig pala, Ilig, at si, si Count Vengar. Uh, the usual, ano, uh, praises, then of course, yung uh, assurance ni Count Vengar na as long as his wife is happy, he's, he's alright with, with her, with her massive order of Orna products. Something uh, was bothering Lou regarding the Count's wife. Kasi mukhang, mukhang napakabuting tao eh. Mukhang hindi gagawa ng masama ito. Walang... Uh, I quickly discern na mukhang walang, walang kalukuhan sa katawan ito. So night of the assassination came. Prepared. So Lou brought out his, um, his magic gun. Target sighted. BAM! Dito, sa ulo. Final scene. Well, after he 
made the successful kill, oh, parang, oh, oh, nakita niya kasi na sumugod yung asawa. Kasi nakita na naka, nakaandusan na yung lalaki. So, wow, with, they're, they're in a pool of blood, literally. So, siyempre, nag-iiyak na nag-umagulgol. And something, yeah, this, this plain, um, this plain scene from, from Lou sort of moved him. Parang, yeah, parang nakonsensya nga si Lou rito. And, well, Tart suddenly just, um, just uh, embraced him and said, it's okay, no reason. So, well, tinanong niya kay Tart kung bakit niya, bakit niya ginawa yun. Eh, sabi ni Tart, you look, you look, or you look a little forlorn a while ago. So, nakalata ni Tart na medyo, you know, medyo nakonsensya siya sa ginawa niya. But, that quickly went away when, um, well, one of the people closest to him said, it's okay. So, he walked away from the job. Yup. The proud assassin that he is. So let's break this down, ARD style. Really can. Okay. Pace. It had a slow but subtle pace. Talagang masasabi mong it is um it's a really good build up to the actual kill scene. Kasi yun talagang pinuntahan ni Lurito para itumba ang konding ito because of uh, selling his own kingdom's military secrets to other kingdoms in exchange for drugs in which binibenta naman niya sa loob ng kanyang kingdom. Yup. If that doesn't, uh, if that isn't a scumbag to you, I don't know what is. So, well, according to the House of Torade, he needs to die. The pacing will make you completely understand this. Ako, kaya, I'm co I can confidently say that. Yep, mission accomplished. If the pacing picked up as early as the start of the second half of this episode, anay, the kill scene would be, um, would be, would, 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 would look ordinary. Hey, that, uh, that's that, that's what I'm seeing here. Excuse me. Let's go. <coughs> Do I have any complaints with regards to the pacing? Obviously, I don't. <laughs> Flo Laman. Excuse me again. <coughs> First gear shift here was when, well, Lou said those three, um, Carrier pigeons to um, to Maha para ma uh, receive niya yung para ma receive niya orders niya. Why did I call this a gear ship? Simple lang. It triggered the episode. And number two, Maha uh, has, now has that chance to um to show her wares on how on how wide Orna's information network is. Kasi, well, she had a hand in it. Eh. She had a hand in it because she is the acting director of, uh, of Orna. She, she got to work immediately. Ano tayo? Eh. Kasi, nung dumating yung uh, dumating si Maha with, um, with Lou's mother's orders, yung mga orders na ng Orna, Nasa kamay na niya yung ano, yung, yung nasagal niyang impormasyon, bin, pinasa na niya kay Lou. Ayun, nabasa ni Lou. Uy. Okay, sige. Tuloy ang pagtutumpa sa kondig yan. Second gear shift was when, what? Lou and Maha were, were able to introduce themselves to the Count's wife. Bakit mo din ako gear shift? Again, simple lang. Um, the plan to infiltrate the um, the Count's mansion nagsimula na. So, kumbaga, it triggered the build-up phase of the uh, of the episode. 
So, this build of faith led to the kill scene. Kasi kung wala ito, hindi natin, uh, talaga ko, hindi natin ma-appreciate ang episode ito. Especially the kill scene. Because, dito sa gearship na to nagsimula ang, actually, nagsimula ang build of faith. Because, the main protag himself has infiltrated the mansion. Final gearship was, of course, the kill scene. It is loose uh, first actual kill in this world. Now, well, simple lang kung bakit ko tinawag na gearship ito. Kasi, it's his first. And, uh, it is also probably the first time that he, um, that he suddenly uh, had a conscience post-kill. Uh, kahit siya mismo, hindi niya maintindihan kung bakit eh. These three gear sheets that I saw, the final gear ship will play a role down the line uh, somewhere around, somewhere in these final three episodes. Plot-wise, mm, malinis. Kasi, it wouldn't make sense kung maglalagay ang Silverling or ang Studio Palette ng isang backstory or side story sequence in this all-important episode. Because nandito ang unang ang unang tumba ni Lou. So, ba't mo lalagyan uli ng isa pang backstory or side story? Nope. Yung side story ni ni Ahem dito, I don't know if you can consider that part of the episode. <laughs> Kaya, kita nyo, hindi ko minensyon agad. Because, it's totally negligible. Who? Well, personally, I don't give a shit as to how your, um, how your other candidates are doing. My only concern is Lou. Okay, he's the main protagonist of this anime, not them. <laughs> if you want to distract yourself, from uh, what you call this? From from the main continuity of the episode, go on right ahead and indulge yourself in that scene. Nope, ako, nope, not for me. It's totally negligible. Kaya nasabi ko malinis parin ang plot. So pace, flow, and plot—they all came together for this episode, giving us wow. So, an Satsu Kizoko episode nine. Sir, Totoo sir! Bunti ko nang bigyan ng one thumb up ito, pero naalala ko, the, uh, all the scenes leading up to the kill scene, they were just built up, eh. Talagang, yung pacing, uh, the pacing can be deceiving, actually. Do not be deceived by the slow, uh, the slow and subtle, uh, parts of this episode. It, it's contributory to the build-up leading to the kill scene. So, tama lang yung build-up. Hindi masyadong dragging ang episode na to because of the kill scene. So, tatlong episode na lang ang satsok ni Soko. Are you still gonna miss out? <laughs> so again, ang satsok ni Soko, episode 9, Thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow. Nakapatay na si Lu. Ang layo ng shot na yun. What are we gonna do now, Patreon, manga lifestyle? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch out for episode 10. Oh, final three episodes na starting this week. Do not miss out. Ako, I'm not going to... Miss out on any of those episodes kasi baka anytime lumabas na hero eh. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. For those of you who are still on the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Well, well, uh, we just met.
and it's actually four stories again and first story we met uh, uh, we met a new girl named Inaka who's a um, uh, country girl at art yeah provinciana po and um, she tried to emulate Gomi particularly when she when Gomi uh, had to get a uh, had to get some uh, well had to get a sandwich for Najimi of course or uh, uh, so um, she was able to well, Komi was able to order the sandwich and uh, she ordered it without saying a word at Dunna believe si Inaka and uh, who was witness to all this of course Tadano final story was Komi uh, realizing one of her dreams na <laughs> may may nakita siya parang foreign matter dito sa sa mukha ni Tadano and uh, she she just couldn't say to Tadano hindi, hindi niya ma hindi niya masabihan na uy meron ka rito but eventually Najimi told Tadano that he has a sesame seed on his mouth <laughs> Patreon Maka lifestyle. Let's break this down ARD style. Pace. I think the pacing picked up during the during the final story. Kasi uh, talagang you would hin, talagang uh, you would actually feel Komi trying to say to Tadano that he has something on his face. That yeah. Uh, in mga mo sa sabi na tense pero. It was so. Uh, it had that funny atmosphere. Okay. Kasi talaga hindi niya masabi ni kay Tatano na Tatalo! There's something on your face! <laughs> so, do I got complaints when it comes to. when it came to the pacing of this episode? Absolutely not. Kasi. Um, in the first story, medyo slow on pacing, pero. Uh, it's proof that uh, you don't need a fast pace every time to to uh, um, to make someone laugh. I mean, the first story proved that. So I got the complaints when it came to the pacing of this episode. Basically, Flonaman, the biggest gear shift I saw from the first story is when. Komi actually bought that sandwich. Uh, and she, well, we all know how Najimi orders her sandwiches through Komi. And dami. And dami <laughs> So, well, Komi was able to process all of that. Pero pag dating don, halos, uh, yeah, she had a hard time giving the specifics of the order. Pero, I think, yeah, I think sa sobrang ganda niya. Nagets kagad ng, ng clerk ko ano gusto niyang order. Excuse me. Why did I call that a gear shift? Well, simply lang. Kasi, uh, slowly but surely, Komi is able to get the, um, uh, what you call this? To get the idea of her friends. Nanan na si Najime pag magpapabili ng sandwich yan biggest gear shift of the second story is well Komi was able to to visit someone else other than her inner circle on her own why did I call this a gear shift? isn't it obvious she can now um to call this she can now decide on her own whether to visit someone or not hmm character development na naman kay Komi Biggest gear shift naman of the third story was, well, you gotta cheer on Komi for this kasi she's able to perform a part-time job now. Why did I call this a gear shift? <laughs> it's a no-brainer actually kasi a part-time job is one of the best ways to, uh, yeah, to enhance your communication skills. Disorder man o wala. So, this was a great learning experience for Komi. 
biggest gear shift naman of the final story is um uh, nung when Komi um uh, made that rare request yeah according to Tajimi uh, according to Najimi na tawagin siya on a first name basis pero well hindi magawa ni Tatalo <laughs> why did I call this a gear shift well even Tadano suffers from communication disorder sometimes. Talagang, um, siguro, force of habit. Yeah, so to speak. Hindi niya matawag si, uh, si Komi by her first name. Talagang, it's a force of habit. For, um, Tadano, it's a hard habit to break. <laughs> Ika nga na Chicago. These four gear shifts that I saw. For me, these are all character development gear shifts for Komi and it will play a role definitely in the final three episodes. And we'll, uh, in all indications, all these four gear shifts will, uh, will tell us that yeah, Komi's uh, improving on her uh, communication disorder. So we gotta cheer her on. Plot-wise, well, Super planchado. Impera nyo pa naman. Well, I seen uh, a smooth transition in all four stories. Parang ano eh. It happened in consecutive days. Parang ganun yung nangyari dito. That's, that's the way I see it at least. I don't know about you mga lifestyle Patreon. So, the way the four stories transition into each other nasasabi mo nga talagang hmm pwede lang sabihin iisang continuity na lang ito that's how uh, that's how well ironed out the plot is talagang especially if, uh, whether you're uh, new to anime or uh, as seasoned as me You can you can easily uh, pass this off as one continuity. Hindi siya hindi siya talaga apat na kwento. That's how well ironed out the plot is. So pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode, giving us another four great uh, and uh, what you call this enlightening stories. Kasi it's all about character development now for the main protag. So, Comic I Communicate, Episode 9. I'm gonna make my party shot as short as possible because, um... Uh, I wanna go back to sleep. <laughs> Well, from the way I see it, the final three episodes is going, we're, we're going, is, uh, are going to have a um, uh, have a long, longer stories. Siguro, ginawa nila apat ngayon. Dahil mga final three episodes na. By the way I see it, the final three episodes will have longer stories. Which will, um... Uh, which probably will um, will uh, uh, put the main protags um, disorder to the test to see kung talagang uh, kung talagang nagkaroon siya ng improvement so I'm looking forward to that I'm looking now I'm looking forward now to the final three episodes of this anime ang ganda ang ganda so again, Kobe can communicate episode 9. We'll just have to do the drill for now. We wait for next week and watch that episode. If you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. If you're, um, if you're exclusive to the ARD, um, okay lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Mm. 
interesting. Nagpang-abot na sila Yo at Ana. So, we're now back to the current timeline, okay? Tapos na kasi mini arc. And what? Let's just say that Ana gave Yo the slap of a lifetime. It's the type of slap that would leave Yo in a bloody mess. <laughs> so, eh, sinabi naman ni Ana na I forgive you. So, pinatawa na niya si Yo on uh, his decision to lead the shaman fight. Pero, Ana made her point clear here. Uh, Yo's fight isn't over yet. He still needs to defeat Hao. And what? While, um, while this is going on, so the ex laws are trying to revive Ren. And um, who, well, who crashes the party? Ryunosuke at si Manta. Kaya tuloy, nung, nung na-revive na si Ren, hindi natanggal yung pilat niya rito. <laughs> Uh, he, he now has a really big scar on both his chest and his back. Yung kung saan tumagos yung, yung blade ng, na, ng isang oversoul na nakalaban nila noon. Ren is back in action. Eh, yun ang uh, importante ba eh. So, while this one was happening, Chocolove is simply trying to, um, to cheer... Ho, and then, Chocolove is simply trying to cheer ho, Horo Horo up. Pero, nope. He is absolutely um, angry. Talagang he blows off chocolate. Uh, yung kanyang yung kanyang usual na jokes. Nakita niya na nasa trouble ang Iceman. Si si Big Guy Bill ang ang katapat nila at si ano si Blocken. Siguro on on house orders uh, papatay nila ang Iceman. But Um, due to horror, horror stupidness, well, he, he himself admitted it. Uh, sumabat na si horror, horror. Tutulungan niya sana yung mga ang Iceman. Uh, watching in the shadows are his sister at yung father niya. He was already beaten up. Tapos biglang sumingit si yung tatay niya. And ang reason niya, He was, he was getting these planks from an old, an old shipwreck. And tinanong sa kanya yung big guy, Bill, ang kinagawa mo dyan? Sino ka ba? Well, Horo Horo's father just said, I'm just here to make a raft. Uh, I want to leave this island. And, well, napansin ka agad ni big guy, Bill, na mataas ang furyo ko ni, ng, ng airpot ni Horo Horo. Well, sinabi lang niya, Hmm. You seem you seem like a powerful shaman. Eh, sinabi na lang ni ang tatay, I'm just a regular office worker. Ah, ganoon sabi niya, "Oh, well, bigla na lang sumugod si Big Guy Bill and poof. His the father spirit ally suddenly suddenly punches him out of his out of existence. Nagtaka na lang si Blacken kung baka paano nangyaring ganoon. Final scene. Well, Horo Horo now has blocking in his sights. Well, not only is he using his own spirit ally, but also the spirit allies of the Icemen. In just, uh, in just a few seconds, he can now match up against blocking. Grabe. No, gusto ko talagang, mangy- gusto ko talagang malamang kung ano mangyayari sa laban na yun. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. The pace actually picked up nung uh, nakita ni Horo Horo na in trouble ang mga Icemen. Here's what the pacing of this episode will make you understand. First half, understandably slow. Kasi the ex laws are trying to revive Ren and they were successful. You gotta have a slow pace to... um. To, to help you root for Ren. Kasi, akalain mo ba naman, si Yo, ang natatangin shaman na dapat pumatay kay Hao, nag-quit sa shaman fight because uh, 
because of because of his own because uh because of rent. If the pacing of the episode for the first half of the episode eh medyo binilisan nila ng tulad ng second half wala eh sira yung um sira yung moment eh na nabuhay uli si Ren sirang sira yun I totally get the idea so no complaints flow naman first gearship here was when yun was uh, Ren was on the way to um, getting back to the world of the living. That was a very surreal gear shift eh. Kasi right there and then inamin naman ni Ren na nagkamali siya. That uh, he shouldn't have done that. Do I need to explain why I call this a gear shift? Kasi If it weren't for this gear shift, Ren would not utter the words "thank you" to you. Although he, although he said it in Chinese, at saka wala naman si yo don. Jeje, Jeje means thank you in Chinese. Second gear shift was when Horror discovered how um, how strong Big Guy Bill and Block and are combined. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, It's a very pivotal gearship for Horo Horo himself. Kasi, um, he saw the big disparity in for Yoku. So, as a result, medyo nag-alangan na sa tulungan ng Iceman. Pero medyo uh, nanghina ang loob ni Horo Horo dito. But, if it were for this gearship, His father wouldn't have wouldn't wouldn't have given the assist. Yeah, you can call that an assist. It showed how mentally weak Horo Horo was. And if it weren't for this gearship, Dinya Mari realize yon. Final gearship was of course the final scene. Where he where Horo Horo manages to um Incorporate the spirit allies of all the Icemen. Kasi down silang lahat eh. Why did I call this a gearship? It's a gearship of discovery for both Horo Horo and us viewers. In theory, sa akin lang to ha, that will raise this for Yoko by at least five times para mamatch lang niya ang for Yoko ni Blocken. These three gear shifts that I saw, um, the first one will play a role down the line in this anime, in this reboot. Kasi, hello, Ren is back. So, may kaaway na naman si Oro Oro. <laughs> Plot lies. Malinis. Mainly because there were no side stories or back stories in this episode alone. Mabuti na ba? <laughs> because I was already getting tired of the of that of that fourth part that uh, five part or four part mini arc. I was already it was already getting old. So ipinokus na ng bridge sa main continuity ng anime ang episode na to. And, thank goodness, we're back in the main continuity of this anime. Kaya, malinis ang plot. And, if the plot weren't this clean, you wouldn't um, appreciate how um, how ethical, so to speak, Ren is now. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 34. Sipa. Oh. <laughs> Two thumbs up. So, what can we expect now that Ren is back in, in the fold of things? Hmm. 
alam na niya na nag-withdraw na sa shaman fight si Yo. And and I'm very sure that well, he's well aware that um Yo's fight is not over. Kaya he'll probably be a more supportive uh, a more supportive ally. Pwede mangyari yun. Well, it has happened in the original series, okay? <laughs> so, ano pa? Of course, Ana is still um, supportive of you despite the decision. Eh, siya na nga mismo nagsabi kay Yo, your fight is not over. There's, you need, you still need to defeat how. Yeah. Pinalala niya talaga kay Yo. Talaga, puk! Lakas eh. Parang ano na eh, parang, parang suntok na eh. Nagtaka nga si, nagtaka nga si Ren kung bakit nagkagano'n yung mukha ni Yo eh. Nagtaka nga si Ren nun eh. What happened to your face? <laughs> that, 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 that was a funny moment. That was a really funny moment. So, Bilang mga Shaman King fans, we should expect greater things from the lead characters now that Ren is back. Yup, Tao Ren is back. So, we can also expect um, more likely um, he will be taught the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu. Si, si Ren. And, well, Actually, talaga ituturo nga sa kanila ni ano eh, ni uh, ng father ni 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 Yo. Ituturo na nga sa kanila eh. Ni ano ni 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 Miki. Eh na-odlot kasi they got assaulted by um, by one of by one of house by three of house minions and of course ni Chrome na kakampini hao sa mga officials actually there's there's two of them eh. isa dun si Mick si Nick Rome we'll just have to expect greater things from this uh from the Shaman King reboot right now it is looking really good I wonder how this anime will end no kasi wala na kasi yung sa Shaman fight eh. so how is he going to challenge how now to a fight. There are lots of ways, actually. So, so again, <laughs> Shaman King 2021 episode 34. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow. Welcome back, Ren. So what do we do now? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And um, for everyone who is who are still exclusive to the ARD, I still expect you to um, to subscribe to Patreon. But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Well, we found out in this episode that um, the name of the um, uh, of the new god, ca god candidate that was introduced is Hajime. Born ugly and poor, when he became a god candidate, he found uh, he tried every way to become handsome. Ayun. The more handsome he got, the bigger his psychotic ego bega uh, became. Okay, literally. So his angel is Balta. The Angel of Intuition. Uh, nakapag move in na ang mga lead characters sa kanilang bagong uh, headquarters, yung kapilya. At home na at home nga mga angels ito ang tuwai. <laughs> Hindi takbo sila na nato at Mirai doon. And what? Well, they saw na, they saw Hajime. Basically, na nato went into the house to look for his family. And ang humarap kay, kay Hajime si Mirai for the first time. Without hesitation, Mirai shoots a red arrow. Yeah. Tuwang tuwa si Nase, syempre. Then, um, uh, all of a sudden, well, 
sa uh, ang bilis na pangyayari. No moment, Mirai shot that arrow. Hajime disappeared. May God can't deal it. May papak din to. He flies that fast. Uh, they went back to headquarters. Ayun, uh, sinisisi ni Nana to yung sarili niya. Then, a call came from Metropoliman himself. Sinabi na ni Metropoliman kung nasaan ang pamilya niya. Ayun, hanapin niyo. Final scene. Well, um, Saki is left uh, feeling down again dahil hindi nga niya matulungan yung dalawa. So, wow. What is, what in the fuck is going to happen after this? You know, gusto ko malaman eh. Kaya, iniklihan ko ang rundown ko ngayon. Let's run this down, ARD style. Pace from the opening scene up to, yeah, up to the front start to finish. Tense some pacing. Kahit, um, kahit yung, yung backstory ni Hajime, it took up nearly half the episode. Tense pa rin eh, kasi this guy is, yeah, probably more psychotic than, than, than girl A. This psycho is a god candidate. <laughs> so that makes it, uh, yeah, he, he has, he even has, despite his good looks now, he has that creepy smile. And while I was watching his backstory, talagang, it was excruciating to watch. <laughs> talagang tense ang pacing kahit, kahit sa backstory na to. But do I have complaints? Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't get me wrong, mga ka-lifestyle Patreon. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was, um, was that scene where Hajime first uh, showed himself to Mirai and Nana to. Masa sinab, masa, well, he's person, personally sending out the message to these two that hmm, he'll do anything for Metropolitan Man. Then why did I call this a gear shift? <laughs> Simple lang. A new enemy is now in the mix. It further complicates the storyline. Kapag hindi nyo tinawag na gear shift ito, <laughs> mga normie kayo. Consider me a normie if I don't call this a gear shift. Second gear shift was, well, um, it was during the backstory sequence when Hajime found out that, um, that the, uh, the sole heir to Sojo Industries wants his sister to look uh, to look alive his sister's corpse why did I call this a gear shift the sole heir of Sojo Industries is Kanade is Uryo Kanade also known as Metropoliman so eto palang cosmetic surgeon ni Hajime eto rin palang cosmetic surgeon ng ng kapatid ni Metropoliman see the connections now mukhang magaling ano to eh magaling mag track down si Hajime ito despite his psychotic behavior and that makes him more dangerous than Metropoli man um you can call it a uh, an anime critics easter egg <laughs> that gear shift kasi um if you look at it uh if you deep dive into that gear shift Hajime now knows something about Metropoliman that the lead characters know nothing about. Now, it's up to to both Mirai and Nanato in the next episode kung bubuhayin pa nila itong God Candidate na to. So, yeah. That's why I called this a gear shift. Very crucial ito. Ito ang nalalaman ni Hajime na to. Final gear shift was Yep, Metropoliman having the gall to to call Naruto about his family. Kung nasaan sila. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, simply lang mga lifestyle. The main villain has upped the ante in this war of God candidates. So, we can now say that his evil knows no bounds. Uh-huh. All the more he should be dealt with 
as quickly as possible. So these three gear shifts that I saw, yep, all of them will play a role down the line in this anime, if not the next two or three episodes. Magiging factor ng tatlong gear shift na to. Plot wise, planchado. Bakit? Well, despite the rather lengthy backstory sequence, yung yung takbo niya papunta sa present timeline niya. Kung baga, uh, before Hajime uh, offered up his services to to uh, to Kanade, he now knows kung ano ang pinaghuhugutan ni Metropoliman. Yun nga, yung through, through, his, through his own cosmetic surgeon. If the plot weren't this well ironed out, we would we would not um, sort of appreciate the backstory Hajime has uh, leading uh, which uh, eventually led us back to the main continuity of the episode hindi siya uh, abruptly na naputol no it was uh, there was a smooth transition between uh, his backstory and the main continuity of the episode kaya no complaints when it comes to the plot. It's a well ironed out one. So, pace, flow, and plot. Hmm. They all came together for this episode. Giving us another one from this great anime. Talagang. Wow, what's, what is Naruto going to do with Hajime? Alright. Yan ang eh. So, Platinum End Episode 9. All we have to do now from this point onwards is to um, expect both the best and the worst of uh, what's going to happen in this. Yeah, the War of the God candidates is now on. Because uh, Hajime has now entered the picture and he has sided with Metropoliman. So you can now see that this further complicates things for the lead characters. Kaya. Tutukan na natin ito, mga ka-lifestyle. Patreon. Gumaganda ang Platinum End. So again, Platinum End Episode 9. Yeah, deserves another mic drop. Next thing we do is the drill, of course. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Patreon, wait for my next upload. For those exclusive to the ARD, okay lang, pero mag-subscribe pa rin kayo, ha? Uh, we have now entered um, the final three episodes of, uh, well, uh, shall we say part one of season two? Hmm. Nagsimula ang episode to with Moroha's side of the story. Uh, she prepares to uh, to regroup and rethink a strategy on how to um, to bypass the security of the um, uh, of the yung pinakapalasyo ng ng, uh, ng mga raccoon dog demon. Now, while this was going on, Toa, Rion, and Riku were over there having a casual conversation about Riku's origins. Then all of a sudden, um, Zero makes her move on uh, on Toa. Then, while this was happening, well, Setsuna gets to experience the um, uh, gets well. She's already experiencing her first day of the new moon. <laughs> A snow demon is after her. Bottom line. And Bob, uh, ipinagbili na lang niya kay, kay Hisui kung anong gagawin pag dumating na yung slow demon na yun. Sinulang niya sa isang scroll na ganun. And with, uh, due to the very cold weather, nagsusin ang tatlong kimono. Bilang, uh, parang kasalamig. Final scene. 
we go back to Toa's side of the story. Ayun, nasabi natin kanina. Uh, Zero ha, had, uh, has, his, has her way with her. Tinukot siya. Kumaga, y- yung mga demon butterflies na ma- may mga pinadala siya mga paper butterflies eh. Parang distraction. Ang tumira sa kanila si Rico. But, it was all just a trap. Talagang siguro, pinlano na niya na ang kukontra dito si Rico. Naging mga talisman na lahat ng mga pinuto niyang butterfly. And, boom! A sealing spell is activated. Um, Rion almost got caught in the, um, in the in the seal kung hindi lang siya tinulak ni Toa. So, yun. Na, nadukot ni Zero si Toa. So, let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Part of the quick rundown kasi it's, ano na eh, it's uh, almost every anime here is on the road to the finale. In the case of Yashahime, final three episodes na siya for part one. Pace. The pacing is just right for each of these stories. So, combined, the only time the pacing actually picked up for the entire episode was, um, eto, the final scene. Kasi, well, y- you have to understand, Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle. Sunrise uh, had to, um, but you, you can you can you can tell by the um but well, from the previous episodes lang eh sunrise had to give equal time to all to all three uh, all three main protacks kasi nagkanya-kanyang trip nga ito eh basically so right now um they're all on equal footing and what we thought was what we we all thought that setsuna side of the story is over nope hindi pa pala if the pacing of uh, if the overall pacing of the episode were were um, slightly fast yung talagang lahat sila lahat ng uh, all their sides of the story or uh, were all fast paced wala tayong maintindihan we, we totally won't get um, what they're going through and what they need to overcome to well, to, to become better demon slayers. Bottom line. Flow naman. The biggest gear shift here, kasi tatlong story eh. And uh, I really don't want to uh, cite any other gear shift. But the biggest gear shift for me uh, from this episode is yung yung pagkaka-instruct ni Setsuna Kihisuwa yung what to do. Well, tataka kayo kung bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to. Well, Here's my explanation. Uh, Setsuna is now making sure na, well, unlike uh, her sister who's always unprepared for this kind of a night, is eh, talaga siguro, eh, well, umiral, let's just, let's just say na, umiral ang pagkasigurista ni Setsuna rito. So, every time there's a new moon, there's a huge target on both their backs now. That's why I call it a gear shift. This gear shift that I saw particularly will play a role later on uh, if not in if not in the final two episodes of part one more more likely sa part two na. So we still be prepared. We, still, we, 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 we need to be prepared for that as well. Right? Plot wise again for Probably the fourth or fifth time, planchado. Maganda kasi yung pagka-transitional sunrise between uh, the stories of Toa, Setsuna, and Moroha. Although, um, they're different, they're, they're, totally, they're totally different stories. They're not yet related to one another. Kaya, maganda yung pagka-transition ng sunrise dito sa tatlong storyang ito. If you're new to anime, you would easily pass this off as one story. Ganon ka, ganon ka planchado ang plot ng episode ito. It's so well ironed out. Again. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this, an- for this, uh, for this episode. So, 
Yasha Himi the second act, episode 10. Double digits na. Two thumbs up. Meron akong... Ah, gusto kong i-deep dive ngayon eh. Yung pagkakaschedule ng Sunrise for season 2 of Yasha Himi as a split course, as a split course season. They didn't do that in season 1. So for fall 2020 and winter 2021, tuloy-tuloy eh. Ewan ko kung bakit nila ginawang ganito. But, uh, who am I to, who am I to question that? I'm just a viewer. <laughs> I'm just a critic. But, ang mabuti rito is this. Uh, yeah, we, we get to, um, we get to have a break of three months. Kumbaga, so tapos na tayo sa, matatapos na tayo sa part 1. For winter 2022, we can now, uh, we can now watch other animes naman. Kaya, uh, so habang hinihintay natin, uh, mag, uh, mag part 2 na ang, ang season 2 ng Yasha Hime. That, that's the only good thing I, I, I see here. Pero I really want to know kung bakit. Well, if you know any conspiracy theories regarding that, there's the comment section. Okay? Leave it. Leave your thoughts and comments there. So again, Yasha Himi the second act, episode 10. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great spin-off Maha lifestyle. Yes. So, wow. Ingat kayo to. What do we do now? Siyempre, the drill. We wait for next week and watch episode 11. Tandaan nyo, malapit na magtapos ang part 1 ng season 2 ng Yasha Hime. Kaya, tutok pa more. <laughs> Patreon, wait for my next upload. And uh, to everybody who's exclusive to the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Road to the series finale has begun. I don't know yet, <laughs> but anyway, we picked up where we, where we left off in episode seven. So the assault on the Morro has begun. So yun pala ilalanding pala sila by by parachute. So hindi sila i hindi sila maayos na na palalabas nito sa nakserer. Confident sila. So ayun nakita kita kita nila. Uy, ito pala yun. Laki. Laking kanyon. But soon after, they realized that this is not the real Morpho. Decoy lang. The real Morpho is waiting for them in the, in a, uh, on their extreme left. Mas malaki. So, well, ginamit na sila kung gano'ng kalakas ang totoong Morpho. And our suspicions were correct. This is actually run by the brain of Kiryanosin. Uh, Shin fired his, uh, his main missile to mama dun sa pinakaleeg ng Morpho. Then, uh, magriritalit na ang Morpho until Central Command um, sort of uh, kumbaga, overrides it. Kasi, uh, yung gagawin kasi ni, ni Kiriya. Hindi na naaayon sa plano ng Legion. Shin was that close to destroying the Morpho. Ngayon, ang sabi ng, uh, ng command center, magbumaling na sila. But Shin said, Nope, our mission is not yet done. Kahit ano pang convincing ang ginawa ng, ng, uh, ng, ng Central Command, ng Alliance, Nope. Shin stuck to the mission. Up to the final scene, hinahabol nila ang Morpho. It's been 10 hours na. Then, um, napansin nila na parang merong kumakalos ko sa loob ni Fido. Yung kanilang, uh, yung kanilang field supplies robot. So, sinabi lang ni Shin, buksan mo yan. Binuksan nga, ayun, si Frederica nasa loob. This complicates things now. Frederica insisted that, um, that, uh, all of them would return Pero Sinabi ni Shin Kay Raiden Na 
ibalik si Frederica sa sa forward base. So, no. Frederica had no choice but to agree with Shin. You, you all have to come with me. Parang parang ganun sa dito na effect sinasabi niya. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's break this down now, ARD style. Pace. Two thirds of the episode, it was really tense. Kung baga, I don't know if it it's both fast and excruciating. Lalo lalo na nagharap na sila kiriat sin. It's the Morpho versus uh versus one rigid leaf. Outmatched si Shin dito, but uh, he's determined to take the Morpho down, even even. Even if it's all by himself. Just goes to show you through the pacing of this episode that war is ugly. So, no complaints. <laughs> Excuse me. Yung pacing kasi ng episode na to panggera talaga eh. If it's, um, it's for a battle scene that will take up at least half the episode. So, it will really... The pacing will really make you ride through um, the waves the, the lead characters are, are, are riding right now. Uh, en route to the Morpho, their, their true target. Flo naman! First gear shift here was when they now have their sights on the more on well, on what they think was the Morpho itself. Why do they call us a gear shift? Simple lang mga lifestyle. Well, You can say it's uh it's the turning point of the episode kasi it led to the second gear shift. Ayun, nakita nila yung totoong Morpho. Mas malaki pala dun. <laughs> Two gear shifts in almost in succession. Bihira 'yun. <laughs> uh, I've 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 been critiquing anime since uh since last year and I and it's a rarity for me to see two gear sheets that are almost close close together that are almost side by side pero connected sa isa, isa that's the beauty of this final gear shift was when well um Kiria retreated on well he had no choice kasi um in override siya ng central command ng legion eh so ibig sabihin noon hoy nagmamalabis ka na bumalik ka rito Siguro, ganun ang, ganun ang gusto iparating ng, ng, uh, ng Central Command ng Legion sa kanya. But why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi, if you would deep dive into that particular sequence, ano eh, um, Kiria really wants uh, a go at, um, at a fellow member of the Nosen clan. This gear shift made us see how um how psychotic Kiria Nosen is and for his brain to be running the legion's most powerful weapon that's disturbing in itself so these three gear shits that i saw definitely all three of them will play a role in the in the road to the finale plot wise well Malinis. Despite the um the very short backstory sequence, but courtesy of Kiria, if the plot were this clean, we wouldn't deep dive into this um into this episode by ourselves. Because ang linis na plot, eh. talagang na focus yung uh yung pinaka continuity ng episode dun sa gere. Talk about the Legion outsmarting the 86. Okay. So, pace, flow, and plot. I almost didn't tell the flow from, yeah, from the plot. Yeah. It's probably that good. So, 86 part 2, episode 8. Easy pa. Mm. Two thumbs up. Here's the thing about this episode. Well, number one here to uh, number one thing here na no circle that the legion is smarter. Binubana naman gumawa sila ng 
uh, ng dalawang magkaiwalay na rail-based cannon, yung isa, decoy. Yung isa, yung totoong morpho. Pero mas malaki ito. So, ano ngayon, what does this make of the of the Three Kingdom Alliance? Naloko sila ng Legion dito. And they almost lost the 86 here. If it were, well, papapatay mo ba ng ganun kadali yung mga yan? I don't think so. So, well, Shin made it clear that to Kiria that wherever he may go, the 86 will be there to take him down. The 86 are hell-bent in taking him down. Kaya, kapanapanabag, pwe? Kapanapanabig ang magiging final four episodes ng anime na to. So again, 86 part 2 Episode 8? Munti ko na makalimutan. <laughs> oh. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow. After a week up, welcome back, 86. And, yeah. Shut Kiria's mouth up. Well, we'll just have to do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And, To everyone who's exclusive to the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Mm. So, it all comes down to just one more chip. So, nagkalap ng kalaban si Sakura, and uh, it's a it's a boy named Mikael, whom. In the opening scene, nakilala na pala ni ni Hiyori ito kasi pinulot niya yung uh, yung pan yung nabitawan nito. And um, let's just say Mikael um, got love struck with me with Hiyori. Ah ah. Nagkaroon bigla na manliligaw si Hiyori. So, on to uh, on to the battle. So naglaban sila ni Tero to. It was a back and forth affair until in one turn Mikael inubos niya ang mga lives ni Tero to. So then came Tero to's turn. But this turn turned out to be the last turn of the battle. Well, in usual Tero to Korabi fashion, he beats Mikael. <laughs> Remember what I said a while ago. Zero lives na si Tero to. Pero tinalo pa rin niya si Mikael. So, all of Mikael's chips, naki Tero to na. And, well, after the, uh, after the battle, may, nag, nag-sorry si Mikael kay, um, kay Hiyori. And he said, I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough for your love. <laughs> He already properly um properly turned him down. Um, sinabi lang ni Hiyori na if you got strong comrades around you, sige, papayag ng only gawan mo ko. So did that effect? Well, and Miguel was on his way, on his merry way to find comrades. So okay, buo na ang requirements. So all of a sudden, lahat ng chips na naipon ni Tero to, biglang nag, nagkupul-kupul lahat yun. Dumutang. Sa gitna nun, may lumabas na parang susi. So, then that means only one thing. He can now challenge the king anytime. Pero, nung binigay niya ito kay Sakura for safekeeping, tinakbo na sila ni Sakura. As she was um, running towards a uh, new Kyoto Tower, her backstory has uh, has been revealed. Yun pala, nakalaban na pala niya ang king no araw. But, um, probably due to um, a wish that was never, that was, that was half granted, kaluluwa lang niya ang existing ngayon. So, 
yung katawan, yun ang ginagamit ngayon ni Kika. So in order for her to to get her body back, she needs to do it all over again. Kumaga, total do over of the of the rebuild. So kumaga, she has to gather chips just to challenge the king again. Pero ang naging harder pala niya nun, si Ishinomi. Sinabi ni Ishinomi sa kanya, that's impossible. Pero she persisted and instead um, look for someone who can complete the key. Ayun nga, si Tero to. So ito na. She was already at the door of um, Neo Kyoto Tower. Si, nilagay niya yung key sa slot. Ayun, nagbukas. So tuloy-tuloy. Um, until she she was able to meet the king again. Si Kika. So, while all of this was going on, um, Teruto, Hiyori, and uh, si Naomitsu biglang dumating. So, eh, tinanong niya kung bakit, bakit malungkot ang mukha ni Hiyori. Ayun, inexplain, inexplain ni Hiyori. So, well, mainit ang ulo ni Naomitsu because of this. But, uh, despite the, um, uh, the funk they're in right now, Teruto was level-headed enough to say this. Even if she beats the king, she will never get her wish granted. Kasi may naalala pa lang may pumasok sa kan may pumasok sa kanyang memory si Tero to. That he, that he has battled Kika before when Kika was already the king. E, sinabi na niya kila uh, kila Hiyori at Naomitsu that we have to save Sakura. Because oh Uh, but the look on his face, he knows what's going to happen, win or lose. Uh, he knows what's going to happen to Sakura, win or lose. Final scene, ayun. Nagharap na si Sakura at si Kika. So, well, Sakura just wants her body back and Kika said, You're just a doll. Kaya, huwag ka magsalita na ganyan. Sige, pagbibigyan kita. Total, I'm bored as fuck right now. Excuse me. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace! The first, third, and the latter third of the episode, uh, medyo mabilis ang pacing. Because, oh, the first third of the episode, ayun, may battle scene. Latter third of the episode, Kika and Sakura were getting ready to battle. Kasi, well, inaccept na lang inaccept na lang king yung challenge ni Sakura. But in the middle third kasi backstory. I felt it was a slow but excruciating pacing kasi kaya pala ginawa ni Sakura ito. Kumbaga yung pag nung uh, the moment na tinakasan niya sila Tero to Hiyori. She needs uh she also wants to challenge the king also. Kasi gusto niya mabawi ang katawan niya. Right now she's just a um an empty shell. I can't say a soul kasi nakakawakan naman siya nila nila Hiyori at Tero to eh. Do I got complaints with the pacing of this episode? None at all mga ka-lifestyle Patreon. You exchange a fast-paced battle scene with a slow but excruciating backstory. Ngayon lang nagpakita ng backstory sequence si Sakura. Kasi most of the time si ano eh. Most of the time si Tero to. Kasi um, bukod pa sa pagiging main pro tag, he's the one with the worst amnesia. So, pero unti-unti, nare-restore na yung memories niya. Ayun. Uh, which led to the final, which, uh, which was um, the key moment before the final scene. Flow naman! Well, first gear shift here was was the scene wherein talagang no, talagang tinaasa na ni Sakura sila Hiyori at Tero to. Why did I call it the gear shift? It wasn't the battle scene that triggered the episode. Mga ka-lifestyle, Patreon. It was this. Kasi, dito, dito na natin nalaman kung ano yung talagang tunay na intention ni ni Sakura 
which um but well, ngayon lang lumabas all throughout this anime she hasn't uh shown any hidden agendas pero the way she books matches for Tero to pahalata mo meron eh if you're if you have if you have viewed this anime that well that that deeply kung talagang deep dive mo ang anime na to episode by episode mahalata mo so yeah that's what i call that's why i call it the gear shift it actually triggered the it was the actual trigger of the episode or we can say the road to the final three episodes episode 9 eh. second gear shift was during the backstory sequence yung scene dun na um una niyang nakita na na she's getting transparent na why did I call it the gear shift? what? we we now we probably have a good idea now kung ano talaga yung pinaghuhugutan ni Sakura this gear shift was the um was the source of that uh, of that hidden agenda it's something yeah Teruto and Hiyori probably don't know this yung parang nagpipade na yung katawan niya it's something yeah she, that she has been hiding all this time final gear shift was when Teruto decided to to go after Sakura, Sakura and, and rescue her why did I call it the gear shift? No brainer mga ka lifestyle. It was that particular memory na talagang nag-trigger na ang ang totoong tero to. Kasi he has battled the uh, he has battled Kika before when Kika was already the king. And sinabi niya rito, he has won a battle against the king before. Pero hindi na grant yung healing niya. So, we can say now that uh, the granting of wishes is not guaranteed when you when you when you beat the king. Mhm. It's an all important gear shift. Itong pangatlo. So, these three gear shifts that I saw Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't rank couldn't rank either one of them and all three will uh will call this will play a role in the final three episodes of this anime at least uh season one they they might announce yana they'll divide gold black to split four series so season one ngayon, season two this spring so how are we going to end season one just look at these three gear shifts to find out. Sure, para may idea kayo. Plot wise. Planchado. Bakit? Kasi, yung pagkaka-transition ng backstory sequence back into the main continuity of the episode, seamless eh. Maganda yung pagkaka-transition. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's a norm in anime these days that when you show a backstory sequence, you end it abruptly. Aesthetically, you don't do that. Storytelling wise, that's an absolute no no. Kaya kailangan, kung ganito ka ang backstory sequence, give it, give it justification by transitioning it back to the main continuity. Which, in which this episode did yeah wonderfully it's a well ironed up plot so face low plot they all came together for this episode setting us up for probably uh one of the best uh one of the best final three episodes this anime season at least and then, so Built in by Cold Black Episode 9? Fuck that one, Dalton. Hmm. 
thumbs up. Here's another reason why I gave it two thumbs up. Kasi, it featured one and a half battles. It's, yeah, it's the first time this anime has done that. Umaga, but, uh, it was a full battle scene between Mikael and Keroto. Then, medyo pinitin tayo sa final scene nung, yan, yeah, nag, nag-call na ng kanilang mga ng mga aces sila Samura at Ika and, and mind you guys Samura's deck is almost identical to Ika's first deck yung Mayora ang 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 ace halos pareho so I think Ika has the advantage here because the uh Samura's deck, you know, like I said a while ago, it's identical to her, to her first deck. So, she probably, she still, she still probably recalls on how to run it, on how to effectively um, bring out its potential. And, uh, if she does, if she does still remember that deck of hers, Samura's at a disadvantage. Kaya, it's going to be an exciting final final three episodes for season one. <laughs> yun ang yun ang uh, ma-assure ko ngayon sa inyo. It's going to be uh, at least a, uh, a hair-raising final three episodes. Kasi uh, Teroto now has to find a way to to get into new Kyoto Tower. Eh. Excuse me. Sakura has already used the key to enter. So Paleko, one time, one time use lang yung key na yun eh. So, he... Team Teroto now has to find a way to get in para masave nila si Sakura. So, it's gonna be... Like I said a while ago, it's gonna be one hair-raising three final episodes. So, again, Build Divide Code Back Episode 9! Two thumbs up. Can't wait for episode 10 to, uh, to air. So what are we gonna do now? Of course, the drill! We wait for next week and watch that episode. So, it's the perfect time now to take it one episode at a time. Talaga, hihimay-himayin natin ang final three episodes ng, ng season one nito. Ng season one ng anime na to. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. If you're still, uh, well, if there's any one of you who's still exclusive to the ARD, okay lang. You can subscribe later to Patreon. Um, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>